What's up, friends? Dan Vega here, and today we are talking about OAuth 2 logins in Spring Security. So if you have an application and you want to provide a way for users to log in, you can have them log in via form using something like a username and password, maybe an email address. But if you don't want to have to have your users register on your system, you can have them log in via some social login like GitHub, Google, uh, Twitter, whatever the case may be. That's what we're going to look at today. We're going to use Spring Boot, Spring Security, and the OAuth 2 login functionality that's built into Spring Security to make that happen. And it's actually really easy to do. I've gotten a lot of questions about this lately, so I thought we'd just jump right in. Here I am at start.spring.io. I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to select Maven as my build tool, Java as my language. I'm going to change that group to dev.danvega. We'll call this a social login, uh, if I could spell Dan, and then we'll choose Java 17, and we're going to need a couple dependencies. So I'm going to choose web. I'm also going to choose the OAuth2 client. This will bring in Spring Security as a transitive dependency, and so we'll have everything we need. That's really all we need to get started. So what we're going to do is we're going to generate that project. It's going to download a zip. I'm going to open it up in IntelliJ Ultimate IDEA. That is my favorite IDE, but you should open it up in whatever text editor or IDE you're most productive in. What are we waiting for? Let's write some code. All right, I'm going to get started by renaming this to application, and we are good to go. So the first thing that we need is we need a controller. So I'm going to create a new Java class called Home Controller. I basically want to set up a route that is public and a route that is private. So I'm going to mark this with REST Controller, and then we'll create a couple of methods in here. One, get mapping for uh, the root context, so slash. Uh, this is going to be public string home. This is going to return hello home. And that is all for that. And then we'll need a secure mapping. So we'll say slash secured. And this will be public string secured. And then this will just return hello secured. And that is all we need. So we'll need to set up some configuration where Anybody can get to home, but if you log in uh, or if you hit at secured uh, slash secured, then you will need to go ahead and log in. So just to make sure everything is working, um, I wanted to put that. Uh, why did that not go in a package called controller? Come on, Dan. All right, so we refracted that. Now I can go ahead and run my application. And because Spring Security is on the class path, we basically get a default user and a default password. If this is your first time using kind of Spring Security, uh, you go ahead and check out my channel. There's a bunch of videos on the topic. But we have this randomly generated password that we need to log in with. And then everything is secure by default. So to change this, we want to override our security configuration. So we're going to create a new Java class. We'll call this uh, security config, and we'll put it in the config package. So security config, and we'll mark this with at configuration, at enable web security. This will get us going. And then we need to create a new bean of type security filter chain call the security filter chain. This takes in our HTTP security. And then we'll return HTTP.build. And this will go ahead and add an exception. And we are ready to go. So now we need to configure Spring Security. All right, and so we'll use authorize HTTP requests and the Lambda DSL here. And we'll say auth that uh, request matches. So we'll say for our home route that anyone can get to that. We'll say that, and then we'll say any other request, I want you to make sure that they are authenticated. Now, how are you going to log in? So we can provide a form login uh, with some defaults. And that will, let's go ahead and uh, import that static. And that will give us a form login. So now when we visit slash secured, the user will have to log in with their username and password to be able to view that. But we don't want to just provide a form login. Maybe we want to provide OAuth2 login. So how do we do that? So first off, we can say OAuth2 login. Uh, we can also pass the defaults to that. 
And that's all there is to it. That is our setup there. We need to uh, create some properties in application.properties to say what OAuth2 uh, clients we're going to support or what, what OAuth2 providers. So if I go into uh, application.properties, uh, I can fill in some uh, properties. So I can set up, let's just say uh, for this example, we're going to set up a GitHub Oops. GitHub login, and we'll set up a Google login. So one other kind of hack that I love is anytime I'm working with Spring Security, I like to set the logging level for uh, org.springframework.security equal to trace. This just gives me some visibility into what's happening in my application, so I like to go ahead and set that first. Now, to do GitHub and Google or Twitter or whatever, you need to create OAuth2 client credentials on their applications. So let's start with one. We're going to head back over to the browser and we'll talk about setting up GitHub first and then we'll move on to Google. All right, so here I am on my GitHub account. I am going to go over to this little icon here and I'm going to go to settings. From there, we are going to go all the way down here into developer settings, and we're going to go into OAuth2 apps. So you see I have one here from before. Let's create a new OAuth app. We'll call it Spring Security Social Login. Um, we'll just call it that. And then you need a homepage URL, uh, the full URL to access your application. We'll just say localhost 8080. You could fill in some information about the description here. And then you need an authorized uh, callback URL. So this callback URL is something that you would get in the documentation. I actually have it here, uh, localhost8080 slash login OAuth2 code GitHub. Turns out this URL is the same, uh, just whatever this is going to be replaced with something like Google. So uh, I'm using uh, that as my authorization callback URL, and then this is uh, going to control the flow in my application. So all I'm going to do is register my application, and now you can see I have a client ID and I have to generate a secret. Let's take this client ID first and head back over to uh, my application.properties. So in here, uh, for GitHub login, I'm going to say spring security OAuth2 client registration dot and then the name of the provider. So in this case, it's GitHub, and I'm going to say the client uh, ID oops, is equal to this. All right, so we're going to uh, copy that and then just say the client secret is going to be equal to, and then we'll go back over here, we'll generate a new client secret. And I have this, I'm going to copy it. Again, I'll go ahead and delete this after the video. But now I have my client ID and my secret. Uh, so with that, I should be able to go ahead and run the application. And if we head back to the browser, and if I go to localhost8080, we get to home. Uh, this one is allowing anyone without authentication to get to it. But if we go to slash secured, it's going to ask us to log in. So again, we provided a form login as one of the options. If I didn't provide the form login and I only had one OAuth2 provider, in this case GitHub, it would automatically forward to that GitHub login. Um, I'm having both options here. Um, so that's why it shows me the form that comes out of the box with Spring Security. And then it actually sets up uh, the links for you as well for any of the OAuth2 providers. So in this case, it's GitHub. I need to log in with GitHub to view the secured page. I'm going to say, OK, go ahead and authorize that. And I'm forward on to the secured route. So great. That was it. That That's that easy to get going. Um, what I want to do now is do the same for Google. So Google, you will want to go over to console.cloud.google. Uh, I will say it was a little confusing. You have to set up the OAuth2 consent screen first. If you've never done this, you need to do that first. Once you're done there, you can go ahead and go to the credentials area and then create a OAuth2 client ID. So we're going to create credentials, 
OAuth2 client ID. You're going to pick a web application, and then you're going to give it a name. So Spring Security Social Login. And then you need to add an authorized redirect URI. So again, this is going to be the same as before, which was localhost8080 slash login slash uh, OAuth2 slash code and now Google, all right? So we're gonna add that URI um, and then create. And then what it's going to do is it's going to give us that client ID and that client secret. So I'm gonna head over to here and I'm gonna say the same thing. So spring.securityOS2 client registration dot Google dot client ID, and then we'll pass that in. And then let's head back over here and copy the secret and spring.OS2 client registration Google and the client secret. Um, so there's some other things that you can configure in here. There is like, so if I'm in spring security OS2 registration dot Google dot scope. So there are things like scope where you can say like, what is the available scope of this OAuth2 application? Like what information uh, do we want to access? Um, so go ahead and read the documentation if you want to dig down and figure out what else you can configure here. But that is it for this. So I'm going to go ahead and restart this. And we will see that if we go to localhost 8080 slash secured, we are now given two options. So we can log in with GitHub or we can log in with Google. So now I'm gonna try Google. Here are my different options for my Google account. I'm gonna sign in with that. And as you can see, I am taken to the secured page. All right, thanks for sticking around to the end of that tutorial. It was a short one, but a sweet one. I know a lot of you were asking me about how to do that. Obviously, this is just kind of one piece of the puzzle when it comes to security and OAuth and OpenID. There's a lot to learn, uh, but this is extremely easy to set up in Spring Boot and Spring Security. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of walk you through that. Now, something else I've been asked about, and I'm interested to hear from you to see if it's something you're interested in. Uh, we get that out of the box form login, that out of the box uh, ability to log in with GitHub and Google. Uh, but what if you wanted to customize that page? Uh, you can do it. Uh, you can override the login page. You can kind of set that up in Spring Security. Uh, and it, maybe you're interested in customizing that. Uh, if you'd like a tutorial on that, let me know. Uh, I'm a big fan of creating front ends. Uh, so I would create, you could do this in like Time Leaf, but I would use something like uh, Vite and Vue uh, to create that and something like Tailwind to style it up. So I think that would be a fun tutorial. If you're, you're interested in something like that, let me know. But what about this one? If you found some value in this tutorial, friends, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as always, happy coding. There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go.